Hello everyone and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program 1.6 with Kerbalism. In this episode we are going to start off with a Minmus supplemental mission. Uh, I mentioned at the end of the previous episode that we should probably add some more batteries to the Minmus station and that's basically what this is. Uh, two stacks of batteries with some RCS so that they can dock. But then we also have this which is a Minmus lander. Uh, I decided to use the boxy lander can and so I mentioned that it has slots on the side if you put it into the uh, cylindrical version for stuff, but it didn't have enough space for what I was intending. Besides, I sort of wanted to make it a science Winnebago, that's what I call it. And this is sort of a space balls reference, though I, I really wanted to have the solar panels be like the wings on the space balls Winnebago but uh, I would have to have a very ugly fairing in order to do that. So I put them like this. Uh, but uh, it's got a science junior on top, it's sort of awkward that way. Uh, and of course the um, goo containers there and the other scientific instruments so that it can get all that stuff. Uh, landing, it uses ant engines at the bottom. And uh, yep, that's it, there's a decoupler there. So just four ant engines. I think that should be enough. If it isn't, uh, well, we'll find out the hard way. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, of course, it has RCS thrusters, and it's got internal mod propellants, so that's where it's got the mod propellant. It doesn't have shielding, because it's only for short excursions to the surface, not really long ones. And we'll see how that works, but otherwise, it's a simple rocket to send over, and hopefully that'll allow us to ra run the greenhouse uh, constantly without shutting it down. So let's go. Oh, I brought it back in because I accidentally had Kerbals on board. We don't need that. There we have uh, robotic control, but I do need antennae now that they mention it. Um, so let's do that. I always forget the antennae. Okay, so throttle up, SAS is on, and Windows please. Rendezvous will have to happen eventually. Okay, but this for now. And uh, so after we do this, we're going to... Well, let me get it started. After we do this... Ooh, barely off the ground, huh? All right. Uh, we're going to just time warp for a year, basically. And we're going to get to that Duna window and send over the Ike station that we have a contract for. And so it'll be a long-term test of the viability of the Minmus station. And also we'll get the food from the greenhouse. But, uh, and hopefully some science. And we will also be waiting out the Gilly mission that we have to bring back. That in one year and 94 days. So... There's a lot that Kerbalism can do to us in that time, basically. is We're, we're seeing what Kerbalism will do to us. We should probably at least get some science for the science lab. But we don't have any... Oh god, we're turning way too quickly. Yeah, we don't have any scientists on board the Minmus station. I forgot about that. They had us send three pilots. That's not very helpful. Maybe we'll wait a little bit for the whole research lab thing. I don't want to send more Kerbals over. Okay, and staging, staging, and we'll wait a little bit longer, and then clearing separation. Oh, they were confetti. Well, now that we're in space, let's make sure we have our antennae extended. Oh, wigglies. Interesting. Okay, we have shut down. Okay, I just saw a, an apparently new feature to MechJeb that I hadn't seen before. Instead of just calling it a Holman transfer, now it's got a by impulsive two burns a Holman transfer to target. They're trying to be fancy here. And it's got at the optimum time, uh, all these things, this is pretty normal. But when it does uh, at optimal time, it doesn't do the... It, it, it actually aims for it and instead of doing a straight sort of transfer, it adds in a whole bunch of normal because it's correcting the inclination as well. And it's 
calculating the optimal time based on that. Um, yeah, okay, I, I don't need that because I think it's probably better to do uh, do two burns. I mean, not two burns, three burns, a, a tri-impulsive um, transfer uh, with a mid-course adjustment. Well, that's a little bit close. So as you can see, this is 915 plus 132, so that's 1045 uh, versus 1171 that it was trying to give me. So it wasn't, well, of course, we've passed the node, though. <laughs> While I was talking and fiddling around with this, okay. Okay, well, we got the plot back, and now it's time to burn. So let's go. Okay, first burn is complete. Next burn. Okay, I did the maneuvers precisely. Let's see what that actually got us. Well, we have an encounter. It's not too far off. We've got stuff left in this stage. Okay, and we do want to get to our station, Euphrates Station. I haven't named the Ike one yet, but we're gonna go with rivers. It's got a it's got a greenhouse on it, so so here we go. Where's Mimus? There's Mimus, making the correction. Okay, that should be good enough. And we'll use this stage to make orbit, but I think we'll like deorbit it and then finish up things with uh, with this can. Okay, that's gonna crash into the ground. Separation. And um, maybe we should sidestep. Let's sidestep. Okay, sidestep complete. Prograde. Uh, let's get some pitch in to circularize a bit. And then ignition. Okay, that should be safe for now. Oh wait, it looked like we were getting a better closest approach distance. Well, as long as that's happening. That's a Minmus probe right there. I didn't intend for this close approach, but because, you know, we still have a relative inclination there, but I guess we'll do this. Seems safe enough. Eh, I'll lay off of the monopropellants. We probably want to keep as much monopropellant as we can on the station for other purposes. Practically everything arriving will want monopropellants to top off and do stuff. Especially this lander, of course. Okay, we're going to undock this little guy. Um... Yeah, definitely control from here. And let's stock it to our station. Eventually, if you, we want huge solar panels on this, we'll attach those to this little battery pack. Okay, approaching to dock. Oh, we've got magnetism and it's docked. Okay. All right, back to the rest of the mission. Now, this stuff has to dock together because uh, the only probe core is here and there's nobody inside the lander can. We could EVA a Kerbal out to this, but that's going overboard. So, seems a bit off to me, but okay. All right, well, we've connected. All right, so all those batteries are on board. Let's activate the greenhouse again. Oh, it looks like the time to harvest just picks up where it leaves off, all right. I think somebody said that in the comments. Interesting. Oh, it's all open for business. All right, well, we could do an excursion to the surface and get the science lab started. Hmm. 
might be better to do that now. Wait, I thought there was, I think there's a rescue a Kerbal contract available. First of all, before I forget, let me top off the fuel in this. I don't know if that rescue a Kerbal from the surface of Minmus contract is still available, but we'll see. That's one benefit of having a two Kerbal pod. But yeah, back to Space Center and let's check. Well, it doesn't look like it. The one that I saw before is definitely gone, but there's other possibilities here. Um, rescue Dunfrid from orbit of Minmus. We'll have to bring Dunfrid back to get the benefit, but we've got 12 years to do that, so one year isn't going to make a big deal. Okay. And then plant a flag on Minmus. Seems like something we can do along the way. Um, position Gilly probe in an adjusted orbit of Gilly. That might take a while, but I mean, it's certainly doable. Well, we're at our max contracts right now. So let's focus on what we've got. I can't even pick up this science data from the surface of Minmus. You know what? Let's upgrade the building. Let's just do that. Okay, so... Hmm. Well, I mean, we've got so much time to do these. It's so nice to have that. In realism overhaul, the contracts are up like in one or two years. So this is... Ensure the probe has an antenna and can generate power. Is that likely to be a problem? You should know already. We've got the probe there. Uh, well, I assume it does. This isn't really worth much, though. More interesting is this rescue rule more from the surface gilly. The problem with that is, well, hmm, <laughs> that's complicated, isn't it? Let me take a look at our gilly situation. We should remind ourselves of the gilly mission status right now, because the gilly mission has like a station attached to it, more or less. So, I mean, what could happen? Since this has 2,000 meters per second here, is that we could rescue that little Kerbal. But now, if, I, if we rescue the Kerbal, then we've got a little pickle as far as life support is concerned, right? Um, we do have spare life support, but it's not a whole lot. We still have to wait out a year and... 86 days so cutting that in half would be uh, we, we should wait a little bit but we could possibly bring bring him back all this fuel 2,000 meters per second should bring us back so let's take a look that's a interesting contract since we're already around Gilly and everything I don't care about the Gilly probe it's almost free money, but still. Whoa, it's getting worse. Okay, um... So... Rescue Rolmore from the surface of Gilly. We've got 29 years, so that's no problem. We'll pick up the contract and not do it until we're about to leave, and hopefully I'll remember. Otherwise, we'll have to send up another mission to get Rolmore. That's fine. Okay, we've got some commitments here. So, yeah, let's do the rescue run in this. Oh, great. Well, we're back at Euphrates Station, but this this thing is a little bit off again. And I said it to grandparent part now, but apparently that's not good enough. I, s I think I said everything to grandparent part because people told me to say it to grandparent part, but why is the shielding locked? That doesn't matter. Um... That's curious too. The liquid fuel I expect to be locked. I don't know. What will happen if I deceive? Uh, hmm. I don't know. Maybe it's just whacked out from being set to auto strut heaviest power to Rupa. I forget which one before, but whatever. Anyway, um. Where is Val? I mean, I don't, oh, they're probably all still in this pod. I want to transfer crew 
Um, let's have Sherber. Uh, well, Sherber's got two. Everybody's got two stars. Well, Sherber. Go into that. Crew transfer interrupted. Is Sherber in there? Why was crew transfer interrupted? No, it says Sherber's in here. All right. Curious. Okay, so we need to go grab a Kerbal. So where is this Kerbal? Dunfrid's Debris. There we go. This could have done with more battery on it. Well, we do have a lot of Delta V. So we can afford quite a lot of burns here. Okay. Come on, Dunfred. Okay, so Dunford's on board. Now, let us land somewhere. Preferably in daylight. Now, where have we already landed? We need our flags up, lesser flats. I mean, we've landed at a lot of places, even the poles and highlands and lowlands and greater flats and midlands and... I think, I, I don't know if we've missed something, but we wouldn't have done the goo container everywhere. So that's important. We haven't done slopes either. Okay, let's get surface info up. We need to target slopes. We will be landing on our baguettes, as is traditional. <laughs> No, oh, 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 I missed slopes. Uh, probably isn't much of a slope. Let's wait for a different slope. This is slopey. Is this a slope? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, um, surface, negative relative velocity. Burn. We already passed it. This is the one trouble with uh, one kill newton thrusters or ant engines. You can't uh, really do the maneuver very quickly. Okay, that slopes. Possibly we should overshoot a bit, but. Oh, it says we're over lowlands now. Let's not do that. So I guess we'll go for this slopey, slope slope part. Well, this is an awkward slope, all right. It's possible it would have been better to have the Kerbals get out and go to the slope, but then we can't do the Science Junior there. Well, when they said slope, they meant it. The impact tolerance of the baguettes is only 5 meters per second, by the way. Okay, we're sort of sliding down. Uh, but we can do the Science Junior right now. Right? Oh, observe. Okay, from the slopes, keep record data. And... Sort of mystery goo. Keep record data. Okay, we're gonna um, at the rate we're going, we're gonna exceed the impact tolerance of the baguettes. So we need to okay log radiation. Oh, that doesn't. That's not biome dependent. Oh, but the pressure scan is. That's good. 
seismic data keep log temperature keep but we need to plant a flag around here somewhere um, you know what we'll have them go over here and plant a flag let's get up this is too dangerous right now uh, let's turn off the RCS we need the RCS to dock later too so let's get over some flats and then have them plant a flag and do EVA report and all. They're sort of going backwards. <laughs> I didn't even pay attention to that, but we are. Oop, almost took too long there. This is still slopey. This is not very lowlandy. Uh, can we stay stable though? I think it's stable. Okay. Uh, Dumfrit, go ahead. You need some more experience. We need you to trek up all the way up to the slopes again. Now, I don't know where slopes are, but it's in that, that general direction right there. So, you'll need your jetpack. Yeah, I don't know about that camera move, but okay, take surface sample. Still lowlands? Gosh darn it. What the? This looks like a slope to me. Where's our pod anyway? I can't even see our pod. Where's our pod? Station lander. Yeah, that's it. What the? Has it sunk below the surface? Set as target. Where is it? Okay, well, it's 2.8 kilometers away. Hopefully it's not sunk below the surface. That's strange, though. Hmm. All right, well, I thought this would be slopes by now. But all right. Well, the streaks on the ground seem to indicate slopes here. Right? Right? Oh, and a bounce not in space okay slopes keep EV report keep and plant a flag yep we got the plant a flag on in this thing done Fred up oh, go on done Fred at the slope any further and I would have had to turn back yep yep just for safety's sake okay no you better not do that fortunately going down we just need to go forward we don't need to hold ourselves up So after this excursion, I think uh, I'll wait until the next episode. To time, uh, between episodes, I'll do the time warp of a year after we redock this to the station, of course, and see what happens. If something important happens during the time warp that we really have to deal with, then I'll stop it and we'll start the episode with that. Otherwise, we'll be starting the episode with our launches for Ike. Okay. Let's get Dunford back inside. Could still do with a scientists around scientist around here to reset things. But we'll wait till later for that. Like I said, come on. Can't you at least jump and okay, jumping is probably not a good idea. Should have been able to grab onto it or climb or something, right? Oh, this is all buggy. All right, uh, just use your jetpack to go over there. Maybe I should have put some ladder rungs, but I figured it was close enough to the surface, jeez. Okay, grab. I mean, that's pretty darn close to the surface. Anyway, let's target the station. Okay, let's turn so that we're sort of forward. 
tired of this going backwards everywhere thing. So this is slightly different than what I initially intended to do today, but it was okay. Got some contracts done, got another Kerbal on board. Then we've got this nifty little Winnebago. Sort of brings out the fact that the Science Juniors are huge, by the way. <laughs> I mean, they're really big, the Science Juniors. It's like they're containing a Kerbal or something, because they're that big. They're a walk-in closet of science or something. Okay, we should get magnetism soon. Turn that off. And there we go. All right, uh, 1.8 gigabits or bytes. I guess somebody mentioned it was bits. It is a small b. Um, gets transferred to the station. If we enable it, we need the scientist. All right, well, that's standard. Okay, so but the data has been transferred, so that's the important part. Okay, so this is all set. We'll leave our Kerbals here for now, and we will proceed with uh, seeing if they can last for a year on this huge contraption. Well, the next time we'll check in with them is actually when this needs to be harvested, and I want to see what happens there. Unless there's a significant failure, of course. So, yes. All right. So that is the plan. With that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.